Well, we are glad to be here to talk to you about internet safety and technology. It is an important topic, and we're glad that it's one that you selected to have a class on. And I know it's something, it's, it's becoming one of those ones, when I first started here years ago, people would always say, okay, we want first day, we want cooking, we want gardening. This has become the one uh, that people want, even more so, you know, we used to use the when we were in person, which we hope next year, uh, we would go to the computer lab. There were so many seats, but this is something that everyone needs to know. Exactly. So this is something that we may actually need to do even in a plenary big session out in the main thing, because despite all of our training, we get new people. And every day I get, hello, how are you? And I'm like, okay, I haven't talked to Fred in a long time. What is... Why am I getting this message on Facebook from Fred? Or Fred sent me a, a uh, and have you gotten these? Do you get friend requests from people that are, that you're already, that, that you, re, you think, are not I already friends with them? I do. Yes. And that happens frequently. And so you probably, are, that one of two things could be happening. Something may have happened to their account and they legitimately have turned theirs off and are trying to refriend you because they have had something, forgotten their password. And we're gonna talk about passwords coming up and how to do safe ones and to let you to know that uh, whether your password's safe or not. Or it could be that someone has not actually hacked into or stolen the information to get into the actual account. They've gone and created a brand new account with a similar name. So like my actual name is Douglas P. Hess Jr. So somebody could, and that's what my Facebook is. Someone could create a Facebook page that's just like Doug Hess and copy my picture and enough information, which is why you shouldn't put your birthday and all your address and all that in there and maybe a couple of pictures and create a brand new Facebook account. And then they would friend. So I would send, if I were trying to do that and scam somebody and I created, they would, that person would then send, oh, well, Liz Ford is on Doug's friend list. Let me send her a friend request. And so unfortunately, this is the point where I want to bring up that at the office, we've had to make the difficult decision a couple of times to unfriend people. And the reason that we had to do that is because their account was either hacked or copied. I think it's happened both ways, actually. Yes. And then people that that either hacked or copied their accounts have attempted to contact us. And we've known because of the way that the um, instant messages or whatever form of contact it was were worded that they didn't come from that person who sent them or the individual who hacked their account and has directly contacted us. The one most recent was actually just a couple of weeks ago. And I separately went to that person's website. It was not the individual that we knew. And I saw that this person was friends with several of those people. And it said something about Bitcoins. Um, the individual hardly had any friends on their account. There was very little information. So I knew immediately that there was something wrong with that. Another thing they may do is, for example, uh, when we're recording this, the uh, remains of Hurricane Ida have come through. So there's a lot of rain. And so if I were trying to engage in conversation with Liz, because I hadn't talked to her in a while, I would say, hey, how are things going? And so let's have, let's have a regular conversation and then we'll have a scammer conversation. So here would be a regular conversation. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fine. What do you think about all this rain? Oh, my goodness. We're going to have to be like ducks over the next couple of weeks. Have you seen that some of the restaurants are putting in new things about COVID because they're trying to be safe? What do you think about that? Or what have you? Just common things that would be anything. Or, hey, did you see the new restaurant opened? Right. Something like that. Now, here's a scammer conversation. Hello. Hi, how are you? 
very little information. And what they're trying to do is get the other person to engage and reveal information about themselves. Are you there? Right, right. (laughs) Just short little things that let you know that that doesn't sound exactly how your friend or the person, your Facebook friend normally talks. Or if Liz responded to me, uh, I'm fine, then I would say, you know, that's good. And then she might inquire of me, well, what do you think about the rain? And I would say, I'm doing fine. And wouldn't acknowledge the rain. And then at some point in time, I would say to her as the scammer, hey, I got my payment the other day from the new, have you heard about the new EBT card where you can get $1,400? And then that you, should be a red alert. That's Anytime a red flag. there's anything about money, that should immediately let you know that this is not reliable. It's not the person that you think it is. Most people don't use that form of communication to have any financial dealings, whether it's borrowing money or yes. needing money or some scam. That's not how people typically do that. And The federal government, as we'll show you, only uses official federal government.gov websites. And so I've been in conversation with some of those people, and I'll say, okay, I'd like to apply for that funding. Give me the .gov website. And guess what? There isn't one. (laughs) No, it's, oh, well, you need, follow this link, and it's some long random character thing .gmail. Federal government has no reason to use Gmail. The federal government is just like sometimes people will get calls on the phone from the IRS. You owe money. Sheriff's Department's on the way. I need you to go to your local Best Buy store and get $500 in gift cards. The federal government has no use for gift cards. They used to do Apple gift cards, but now that Apple Music is in and they quit doing iTunes, they had to do something different. Go get Amazon gift cards. The federal government couldn't use Amazon gift card. <laughs> do not do this. Do not try and pay your, can you imagine if you filed your taxes <laughs> well, and, gift cards. and, yeah, yeah. and sent in you know, however much money in yeah. gift cards? Right, right. I'd rather send pennies, but. <laughs> yeah, so we wanted to. And, and we're kind of laughing about this, but I want people to know how serious this is. And I would guess that just about every person that works in our office knows somebody who has made the mistake and done this. And we just want to reinforce how important it is. That is never valid. It's never legal. It's never somebody you know. If uh, on a related note, if somebody um, contacts you, contacts you and says they're overseas and this person is having a problem and needs your help and wants you to get those gift cards. That is never real. Never, ever. No. And, and also, unless you've called them first, social security, IRS, none of those government agencies will call you on the phone anyway. They will send you an official letter without any identifying other marks on it to your residence that has confidential information on it. They're not going to call you on the phone, and they certainly are not going to use Facebook Messenger for official information. So let's roll to the PowerPoint uh, here to get you some. So we're going to talk about technology, and I wanted to bring that up first because now we we're not we're this is recorded, so we'll we'll ask you some of this once we get up there, or once we come back. But just think about how you use the internet, what your concerns are. Have you ever had your identity stolen? Do you have an antivirus uh, on your system? So people use the internet for all kinds of things, whether it's email, instant messaging, websites, and things like that. And it's an easy, but now I've only lived here, but I've been to some big cities. You grew up in a little larger city. I did. I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. Yes. Would you say that there are some nicer areas of the city and then some areas that you might want not, not want to go by yourself late at night? I definitely would say that's true. Yes. So same thing with the Internet. The Internet, though, is international. So there are some good places and there are some bad places that you want to protect yourself. And it's OK to go there if you know what you're doing. 
but you certainly want to protect yourself. And so as we go through some of these, many scammers target people in all walks of life, but especially those with disabilities and those 65 or older with emails, charitable donations, online dating, auctions, health insurance, prescription medications, healthcare, all that kind of stuff. As the saying, uh, you know, just because it's on the internet does not mean it's true. Exactly. What would you say is the most re- uh, comical thing that you've read on online recently? I mean, not doesn't have to be about one of those serious topics. Have you seen any, you know, drink if you drink, you know. Oh, sure. The diet. Garlic things, stuff right, all yeah, every right, day. Right, or, right, yeah. or, yeah. or they'll show a picture of a banana or a pineapple and they'll say, a doctor says, this scientist, leading scientist says, if you do this every day, it will clean your system and you will lose 10 pounds. And then you click through 50 pages and they never tell you what it is. Right. But, but they want you to know you have a healthy gut if you do that. Yes. Exactly. There's a lot of that right and now. And you can pay them twenty nine ninety five, and they will tell you. Right. So many of the crimes that we find in real life happen on the internet as well. So we want people to recognize that there is a danger, just like in real life of human trafficking, mostly credit card fraud and identity theft, and then people stealing money, embezzlement. And all of these things can be done online if we're not safe. That's exactly right. And so that's why We want to do this. And again, we did it last year, but we'll keep doing it. So at working at home in the community, our use of technology increases our risk. So we used to be concerned that someone was coming in the door physically or pounding on the door and maybe wanting to break in. Now people, especially with a lot of our electronic devices, can get in. Maybe it's on your phone. Maybe uh, now I don't know if any. Do you have any of those? Where you say, hey, Alexa, turn the lights on. I do not because I um, worry about the security of all that and also the privacy. So I don't have any of those and I don't even use that on my phone. And so that's exactly what we're talking about. That is an issue where it's not just people coming in the front door of your house. It's coming in through your Internet. And I know many of you use assistive technology to help you live. But you need to be careful about that and not just let anybody get in. And the number one thing, well, perfect example, over on the table, the out of sight is, and I've got mine in my office, so they don't jingle so much. What do you carry with you every day to get in to get in and out of your office and in and out of the building? My keys. That's exactly right. So electronically, your key is my password. Now we're gonna tell on ourselves here, or at least I am. So the number one rule of passwords is password being a digital key. Other people knowing your password is the same thing as them having a key to your house or apartment. So never use the same password in more than one place. How many of you are guilty of using the same password in more than one place? But not for anything vital, not like banking or work or anything like that. Exactly. And same thing with me, because I know. So if everything wants you to have a password for something, just so they know who you are when you get back in with your. But if you're buying stuff, you definitely need to have anything with your credit card, financial information. But let's find out why. And also, let's talk about passwords. Now, most people. uh are not fans of, but I don't like making passwords. I want to make a simple password. In fact, I would guess that the number one reason why people's Facebook pages, if they're not copied, actually do get hacked is because they have an easy to guess password. So what would you think the number one password in the world is right now that it's worse? Is it password? Yes. Mm -hmm. Or one, two, three, four, four five, six, seven, eight. Because <laughs> yeah. you have to have eight characters. So let's see how that works. Let's put that in. Let me turn off. So let's see what the password is. If I type in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, it's got the number of characters. Yeah, we get a bonus for that. So we get a 4%. <laughs> that is not good. Very weak. 
Let's try, but this is not as hard as you think to get an easy password. Let's try password. That's not very good. So let's, okay, let, here's a good question. What is your favorite TV show? Uh, I don't know that I have a favorite one right now. Sorry, I, I well, watch okay. a lot of British uh, mysteries. Well, so. do you have cable or do you all watch it online? Um, I watch it on um, Amazon Prime. Okay. Yeah. So, and that, that's common. But I remember when I was a kid that at four o'clock every afternoon, I'd come home and watch Mr. Cartoon. Yeah. So I'll never forget that as long as I live, even though it happened 40, long than that, 50 years ago. So if I type in something simple, even though it's something common, like Mr. Cartoon, 4 p.m. See how my score is going up? Right. And it was on channel three. And I love that show. I just scored 100% doing Mr. Cartoon, 4 p.m., 3 o'clock, exclamation point. Very good. So very easy password. I don't use that for anything, by the way. But that's how easy. It doesn't even have to be something complicated. I mean, yes, there's other companies. I've got, a, I've got a thing called a password card that has all kinds of complex. But you can use something that common. And something that you'll remember because something. it was important to you. Yes. So when I was a kid, and again, I don't use this either. When I was a kid, I would watch Green Acres. Right. So, and my favorite character was Hank Kimball, the county agent. And, I, and uh, I looked it up, and that show aired in 1965. So you could use Hank Kimball, 65, 1965, with a period. Same deal. So it doesn't have to be – I don't ever have to write my passwords down now because what I do is I pick a show that I watched when I was a kid, and many shows had several characters in them. So, like, if your British comedy has – you know, 10 different characters in it, you've got 10 different passwords. Because if you have to change your password every few months, like you do if you're in an office, you've got 10 different passwords because you know all those came from faulty towers or what have you. you could... Right, right. Very good. That's a good way to do so it. So how do you come up with passwords? Um, it's actually very similar to what you do. It's probably not um, a television show, but it would be something important in my life. And then um, very often a date that's related to whatever the important thing is. And then, of course, I go through the, the characters, the exclamation, the star, the whatever. Mm -hmm. so, so, yes, passwords are annoying to have to remember, especially I got a notice the other day and it said, and I spent a lot of time online, it said 38 of your passwords were duplicated and had been leaked online which means someplace I had been, had been hacked and they'd stolen everybody's password on that in a database and published that someplace online. So a hacker now has people's names and that password to use for other things. Right. So that's why we wanted to, the two major things we wanted to cover today are passwords and being safe online because that's the number one call that we get, or people will message us, or we'll see. Unfortunately, someone had had to start a new Facebook page because something happened. Right. So I hate when that that happens, but that's one of the things that we have to be careful about. So that's uh, and again, if you ever need help with a password, now why is that something important? Because people will use that information to obtain money or credit. You could get a credit card. And right, that. and they could have it in someone else's name. It could be in your name, but then you would be responsible for that debt and that would count against your credit and cause problems for you. Exactly, so that's why identity theft is a very, and that's why you sometimes may hear radio commercials about that, uh, about to, to protect yourself. So be very careful. So for tips on that, don't use 
Don't use the same password <laughs> twice. Well, you didn't. You used it 38 times. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> and then, yes, definitely, like you said, Doug, choose a password that means something to you and only you. And then use strong passwords that have eight characters or more. And once again, the all-important combination of numbers, letters, and symbols. Now, one thing, though, caution, you don't want it to be too related to you. So don't use your dog's name because somebody's going to see that or see a picture. Well, hey, Fluffy got out last night. <laughs> and also don't go online. And I'm not trying to take all the fun out of the internet, but do you ever see those, those things that will say, here, do this with me? Right. And you answer all these questions that basically give the information that you might include on the security questions with yes. the site. So if somebody does get your password and they need to know the security questions, once you've done those things online that tells your uncle's yes. daughter's favorite color. That's and, exactly right. You know, and what's your favorite kind of food stuff, and all right? that stuff. Yes, that's exactly right. So that's the other thing that you don't do. If you say, I went to the doctor, don't say what doctor. Don't reveal personally identified identifiable information online, like your full name, your phone number, because that's where the telemarketers get your number. How'd they get my number to call me and ask me if I want an extended car warranty? You gave it to them online. Mm -hmm. Don't put your street address. Definitely do not put your social security number on there. In fact, most people, if they do ask for one, when you call them, only want the last four digits. So nobody should ever ask for your full social security number. Exactly. No insurance policy numbers, no credit cards, doctor's name, none of that stuff. So the more of this information that someone can receive about you, the easier it is for them to um, have identity theft mm -hmm. or open credit in your name or something like that. That's exactly right. So. And don't participate in the Facebook list about your life. So that kind of has been brought down to don't be yappy, which stands for. Your name. Your Never name. tell a stranger your name. They could pretend that they know you and look up your address. That's a real concern. And once again, don't let them know your address. There's no need for people online that aren't important in your life to know where you live. I mean, if you're having a party, that's only going to people that you know anyway, and you can tell them how to get to your house. Exactly. Don't just put that out there. Right. And then like Doug keeps saying, never tell anyone your password, not even your best friend. Once it's out there, it's out there. Because they might inadvertently, inadvertently tell somebody. Right. And then of course, your phone number. You never, ever want to do that. It's just one more piece of information that makes it easier for someone to steal your identity. Because they can do a reverse lookup on, online and find your address and all kinds of information. Exactly. And your plans. Don't tell a stranger your plans. Um, it, it puts you in a dangerous situation. If it's somebody that you don't know online, they could be a dangerous person, so they don't need to know. A lot of times people will put that they're going on vacation, but most of the people that I know that talk about their vacation talk about it after they get back. Um, yes. And, you know, I have posted shots when I've been on vacation, but it's never been um, a lot of information shared, or it's always been when somebody else is home at the house, so the house isn't left alone. But exactly. that's a really easy way for people to find out things about you. Well, yeah, you just certainly don't want to announce uh, that to somebody that, because uh, you, you want your friends to know that you're not expecting movers to come to your house. Exactly. So they see things specifically uh, suspicious, but you also want to advertise to everybody that you're out of town. So go to that concert, go on there when it's safe, go to those places, but don't announce it till you get back. Exactly. So don't open attachments and click on links online. I've got a couple of examples coming up because they're going to want your person. So here's an example. So I have a PayPal account. We have one here at the Ark that people can donate things. So I got a, I get these almost every day. Your account information has been changed, suspicious activity. We want you to log in at the link below. So if I click on that link, it's going to take me to a site that looks just like PayPal, but they're going to want me to reconfirm my account. Now, 
One thing you always want to look at is the address. I'm going to make that a little bigger here. One thing you always want to look at is where it came from. Trust me, PayPal does not have Occamus, GeForce, Snack Me, what all this stuff, dot club as their email address. If it looks suspicious, <laughs> it is. Yes. Go by your instinct. Yes, definitely. That's what a real one looks like. That's a real legitimate one, and it's from PayPal at paypal.com. So it's going to have the company name. Let me get to it. Um, also, make sure that your donations are to a legitimate organization. Exactly. You could go to something um, that looks real but isn't legitimate. So be sure that you know about it, that you have the correct link, that you have information about where you want to donate. Because once that credit card information is out there, it's out there. Exactly. Uh, let's see. We want to make sure you shred oh. things, that you don't keep important information that could give information about you. Yes. All right. Change your bank and credit. Check your for unusual charges. I saw one just the other day. Someone posted and they said, well, I didn't buy something from my actually my brother said, well, that's funny. I didn't buy something from someplace for 78 cents on my credit card recently. Well, that's because someone has caught that. And there's and and that means that your number may have been compromised. You need to check with your bank. So because companies will get your information and they'll check it to verify it by sending, charging a little bit that hoping you won't notice, like a $25 charge, you would notice. But if they send 78 cents, if it gets through, then they know they're safe to do it again for a larger amount. That's exactly right. Yes. So fraud is the intentional perversion of the truth. This is the complicated answer. Essentially, it just means someone stealing from you and doing it and pretending to be something that they're not and stealing from you. So here's some tips. Most organizations like banks, universities, uh, places where you shop, don't ask for your personal information over email or the phone. So pay attention and be aware of those requests to update or confirm your personal information. If you don't know exactly who it is, then don't put that personal information in there. And verify who it's from because... Um, I don't know if you ever watched the movie Catch Me If You Can. Yes. So Frank Abagnale has now spent the last 25, 30 years helping the FBI catch people. But he used to run fraud. He used to scam people. That was his lifestyle. And he got caught. He knew he was on it. But he said that all of the big uh, data leaks and things are not actually people hacking into a mainframe. Somebody will call up and say, uh, is this Liz Ford? Yes. Hi, I'm at the, and no, we're talking a bigger company, but uh, I'm from down here in the IT department and we're having some problems with the server. Could you, uh, and I need to check your password. Could you tell me what the password is for such and such? Oh, okay. Well, people want to be compliant, don't want to get in trouble. They don't even ask, well, can you verify that you're so-and-so? Because companies get so big and they'll, and they'll say, oh yeah, the password for that is such and such. So they didn't even have to hack in. They just called somebody in the company who gave them the key. Exactly. And we want to keep our keys safe. <laughs> yes, we do. So, so, so yeah, uh, this is a big one. Don't open attachments, click links, or respond to email messages from unknown senders or companies. Exactly. And also, if you're out at McDonald's or someplace like that, or any fast food or a kiosk, unless you are at the bank at an actual ATM that belongs to the bank, or you are in a secure place. Anybody can get anybody can that. Get it. Anybody yep. can get that. Yep. So be very careful about that. Beware of free prizes. If it's too good to be true, it is too good to be true. Yes. Change your passwords often. And again, I know that's a hassle, but there's password managers too. And then Doug is really good at our office about helping us stay safe here. We make sure that we have a software firewall, anti antivirus and anti-spyware program. And that's actually all built into your Windows machines. They all come with it. So you don't even have to go buy that, but make sure that it's updated. So here's another one that I got the other day. And it says they're going to inform me that I'm going to, hey, I didn't tell you about this. We're, we're, we're going on vacation because I'm going to get 15, what is that? Oh. Is that 15 million five hundred thousand dollars has been approved lot. to release in our Reserve Bank U.S., 
after finally meeting over your con- overdue funds. So Wow, so the whole office is going. Yes, and so they want my receiver's name, my address, my country, my phone number, a copy of my identification, my occupation, and my age. All the stuff you'd need that would be able to create a complete fake account. Now, notice something. This is the U.S. government Federal Reserve Bank. Um, I don't believe, first of all, my email automatically pulled this out for scam. So they disabled the link so I couldn't. So this is spam. They knew. But I don't believe the Federal Reserve Bank of New York uses a Gmail account. I think they can afford to run their own email server. They don't need a Gmail account. So always look where these things are from. Same thing. I used to be a Netflix person, but I'm not now. So please update your payment details. So they want me to click on that and update it. Again, I don't believe that is the official email address of the Netflix company. It does not look correct. And once again, we kind of are laughing about this a little bit, but this is exactly how people are scammed every single day. And I just want to show you a couple more. So we had an individual recently that got scammed and had their uh, account taken over. And so the person that took it over put this up here, a challenge. There's no name that starts with a T, ends with A, prove me wrong and get blessed. So let's back up a little bit really quick. This is one of the things that I notice. Most of the things like this are not grammatically correct. And the way they're written doesn't make sense. Often words are spelled wrong. Mm -hmm. Right off the bat, just because that is grammatically incorrect, I would know that that's something wrong with that. Well, people are eager. So they immediately type, oh, well, here's several names. And then what they really want is message me with your cash app tag. Now we're going to explain why, but essentially what they would do is send a bogus payment to cash app. You would send real money back and then that money is missing from your account. So this person is just trying to scam somebody out of doing that. And when you actually do, uh, and I, there was another one that showed up that said on that same one that said, here's an opportunity to get extra money Have you gotten anything official from the U.S. government? I have not. Okay. Well, I would guess that if they ever send something, they would not use jot form. So I haven't on my social media. Have Uh, I gotten in other ways? Yes. Yes. Do I get emails for work? I do, but they don't look like that at all. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And they don't use jot form. Jot form is a free company that you can have electronic forms. It's all going to be official. So I was curious. I'm like, Well, I wonder what that does. So just to show you that this is bogus, I clicked on it, and that's what you get. It says fashion, and if you keep going, it asks you to apply to be a fashion model, and at the end, it wants to know, again, your name, address, phone number, identity, social security, all this stuff to sign up. So they're just trying to steal my personal information. Once again... If it's private, keep it private. If it seems too good to be true, it's too good to be true. So we're going to finish up here. uh, But here's some safe online behavior. uh, When you're seeking medical advice, just some tips. Exactly. So you want to make sure that you go to a reliable website and you can find that out by who's providing the information and make sure that it's not somebody that's simply selling a product. Yes. And then of course, look for sites that end in .edu for education or .gov for government. They're more reliable. Because they don't give edu out unless you're an official registered with the United States you know, anybody can teach anything, but you don't get a .edu unless you're a certified by the government official educational institution, and .gov is only for government. Exactly. So, um, And it is okay to shop online, but you just have to take the following precautions. Make sure every website address starts with HTTPS. The S stands for secure. That's right. Look for the padlock lock icon at the bottom of your browser, and that lets you know that the site uses encryption so your information is safe. That's right. When visiting new websites or using web addresses and emails, 
make sure you type their URL directly into the address bar rather than following the links. Because Go ahead. Some people will put a link that looks like you're going to Amazon, but it's not really Amazon. Exactly. And use a credit card. Credit cards have protection that debit cards don't. And one of those is to be able to question the ability of unusual charges and check your statements often. It's been many years ago, but I had somebody in Florida, I wish I would have been in Florida then, use my credit card to get gas and to pay for a hotel. Wow. And my credit card company got in touch with me because it looked unusual and immediately took it off. I did not have to pay for it. And so that's the key. And I think we're, we're going to finish. We'll just stop here. But here's the thing. When you're and this is also one of the things that came from Frank Abagnale. When you and I know not everyone has the ability to use a credit card, so I understand that. But if you can, if you use a credit card, you're spending the bank's money and then you're paying it back. And if you pay it off at the end of the month, there's no interest charge. When you pull it out of your debit card and um, if you unfortunately get scammed, it's gone. And while the bank will try and get your money back, it's not actually there. And the credit card companies usually have guarantees that if they find out the charge is bogus, you don't have to pay because you spent their money. So, and again, I realize not all self-advocates have the ability to get a credit card, but that's one of the things that if you can work out a way to get a secured card, right. you can go to a, um, a, uh, a bank or see if I've got one with me. I have a net spend card where you load it so you can go to and play $3 and then put like, $25 on it, $50 on it. And then if anyone steals that information, it's just a small, it's just amount, a small amount. Yes. Right. So yes, I've got a net spend and another one. So yes, I just went and got a net spend card at a bank or uh, at a convenience store to buy things online. So now I don't ever have to, I'm covering most of the number, but anyway, that way you can, if I blow this up and it costs like $3, if I want to buy something online, don't have to worry about it because if, if I lose this card, I've only out the money that was on it. Exactly. So we could talk for a long time, but I think we've covered many of the most important things about being safe online. And I think a lot of it's just common sense that we do. For some reason, we think about locking our doors, rocking our cars and our house. But somehow when we get online, we kind of loosen up our... right. We get too comfortable, I believe. And so we just need to tighten things up a little bit, use some critical thinking, make sure yes. if it sounds too good to be true, we realize it is. And now we bet that you're going to have some questions. So yes, let's so. answer some questions for you. All right. Thank you very much.